Hi everyone, it's Dawn and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Well, I got a serious topic today. I want to talk to you about a gentleman who passed away on a cruise ship and whether or not you feel that maybe he could have been saved and also would the family have a case for wrongful death and suing the cruise line. So first off, let's go over the details of what happened. This was a Carnival Cruise on the Carnival Magic. And a gentleman around 88 years old was heading back to his stateroom with his wife and a friend from dinner when he completely collapsed face down onto the ground. A crew member in the hall, more than likely a, an attendant, stateroom attendant, noticed, came over, uh, and apparently they were having a hard time. Other people also arrived, were having a hard time reaching anybody on the radios. They couldn't contact anybody from the radio. Finally, one guest reached medical services from the phone in his stateroom, and then the medical team arrived and started performing CPR, including, uh, you know, using the paddles to try and, and, and revive a gentleman, and unfortunately, he did not. Now, the wife says that it just seemed like nobody knew what they were doing. It looked like they were confused, they couldn't get their equipment to work, no one thought of just running to a cabin and calling them on the phone. They kept trying the radios over and over again. And during this time, nobody was attending her husband. Also, they say by the time the medical team arrived, it was about 15 minutes later before any actual medical procedures began being performed on the gentleman. And as I said, unfortunately, the gentleman did pass away. This now calls into questions, right? Was the crew members prepared for this emergency? Did they have the proper training for it? Why did it take 15 minutes for the medical staff to arrive? We've all been on cruise ships and you hear those tests going on, you know, for exercise, for exercise, for exercise. We have B7, blah, 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 code blah. And these are tests to make sure that, you know, crew members can get to emergency areas like fire and medical emergencies, etc. Then why did it take 15 minutes uh, to get there? Now, to be fair, she does say it, she, she is estimating that it took about that long. And while you're in a situation like that, where somebody like a loved, mem you know, a loved one or a, a family member of any kind is in distress, it can seem like forever, like the time just slows right down and one minute can seem like 10 minutes when you're waiting for an ambulance or waiting for a doctor or something like that. It can seem excruciatingly long. And so we have to take that into consideration as well. Did the equipment malfunction? It seems so, um, although we haven't been told by Carnival yet whether or not that did. And it poses the question now, should every single crew member know CPR on a cruise ship? And I'm guessing, actually, I, I don't think that that would be fair to impose on cruise ships if you don't impose it at every business. Um, I've been a manager with a large chip manufacturing company uh, and not everybody received CPR, only a few people received CPR training. In fact, our entire building needed to have one CPR person during the day and one CPR person during the evening. Now, if those people happened to be on their days off, there was no CPR people in the building. Also, go to a hotel resort. Do you think every one of the staff members all have CPR training. 
No, they don't. So should every crew member on every cruise line be required to have CPR training? No. Should they be required to have safety training and you know emergency training? Yes. And it's a it's a stressful situation. I've been in a situation like that. I am I I was the first responder for my company for over 12 years. And I dealt with everything from heads being split open to uh, people cut arms, bleeding all over the place, cut on the necks. I've, I've dealt with that situation, so I'm, I know what to expect. But other people who are put into that situation who've never experienced something like that, you, you just don't always know what to do. You don't know how you're going to respond. So I'm not blaming any crew member for not thinking clearly at the time, hey, uh, my radio is not quite working and everything. What do I do? What? It's a panic situation. You want to help the person and you're trying to think what to do. And it, sometimes it just doesn't come to you, right? It's like when you're trying to think in a trivia question and somebody asks you a trivia question, you know the answer. You just can't think of the answer. So it, I, I, I can't blame people like that. But what this did do is bring into question the... Uh, death at sea laws that are out there. That means it, it, that if you pass away anywhere outside of three miles of the U.S. border, in this case, um, you can only recover, you can't recover like emotional loss or anything like that, you know, emotional pain and suffering damages and everything like that. You can't, re you can't recoup those kind of losses. You can only recoup loss of wages or loss of support, even in wrongful death situations. It's a law that's been on the books for decades out there. So the, the woman was having a lawyer have a hard time even looking at the situation. Now, I completely understand her feelings that she even admits that she doesn't know that if he would have received you know medical attention right away if that would have saved his life or not and that would draw in a lot of questions and you would have to have the burden of proof medically that yes that's the reason he passed away and it would be a, a doctor versus doctor kind of thing you might have your the emotional you know side when you're facing a jury or something but it would be a very difficult case to, to prove. And also, I don't know if you should be allowed to prove. I mean, they did get medical treatment within 15 minutes. Now think about that. Head over to, uh, I was at Animal Kingdom Lodge and my room was at the far end of the resort. If I'd have had a heart attack in the hallway there, First of all, it might have taken a lot longer for somebody to notice me. Um, there's not as many people in the hallways and the corridors very often other than other guests. And so how long could, could I have waited 15, 20 minutes easily if I'd have had a heart attack in the hallway near my room? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, would I have the right to sue Disney because you know, if, if say, or my, if I was married, my spouse have the right to sue Disney if I passed away because it took them 15 to 20 minutes to get to me. No, I don't think I would, uh, in all honesty. You, you know, it can take 20, 30 minutes for an ambulance to get to you, depending on where you live. When my father passed away, we lived in the country and it took 25 minutes for the closest ambulance to get to us. In the meantime, my neighbor and me, I was just a young person at the time, were the ones trying to perform the CPR to save his life. Could I, could I sue my neighbor because he didn't manage to save my father's life? No, not everything in the world should be suable. And I, I don't think in this case there should be a lawsuit. The person did receive care within 15 minutes of it happening. Could things have maybe been maybe five minutes faster had the radios worked properly or there, for some reason there was interference going on at the time? Maybe, but was that the actual cause of the death of the heart in the heart attack? 
Would that five minutes have made a difference? Maybe. The trouble is in court, you would have a hard time proving it. And that's why for every lawyer she's gone to, the lawyer has said, nah, sorry, we, we can't take this case. We can't take the case. And especially that the monetary value at the end would not be very, very sufficient for a law lawyer to put in a, a ton of time, like a big law firm. And I'm curious what you guys think. Do you think that, hey, wait a minute, she, she has a case. It took 15 minutes. What's going on? Or if you think about it like I did with the example of Disney World, if I had passed away there, would somebody have the right to sue because it took 15 to 20 minutes to get to an ambulance to get CPR to me or the hotel staff to get CPR to me in a huge resort? Because I think it would easily take that, easily take 15 to 20 minutes to get response at the resort. I, I think in this case, it's a very tragic story of somebody passing away, but I don't think it's an actual lawsuit story. And, uh, but I just wanted to give everybody a heads up that if something happens, there are, there's only certain monies and monetary value you can get back uh, if it's outside of three miles of the U.S. borders. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Again, condolences to the family. Um, I really wish this didn't happen, uh, but at least he passed away doing something he absolutely loved to do. They were platinum members with Carnival, and they loved cruising. And if I'm going to go, that's the way I want to go, doing something I love. Well, I hope you appreciate this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Want to see more tips, more tricks, more travel vlogs from around the world? Hit that subscribe button. Until next time, have yourself a safe and a great vacation.